So uh, let me start by saying I've really enjoyed what you've put out this year. So I just want to say uh, thank you. You, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm curious if if someone has uh, has never seen anything that you've done, what's the first thing you want them to watch? Uh, Doris. Hello, my name is Doris. Is there a particular reason? Um, I I think that that represents that that's sort of a nexus point for me of all the different sort of things that interest me artistically. It's a, it's funny. It's a, there's an element of absurdity, but there's also a real, a, a, a real humanity there. Um, obviously like wet, hot American summer and Stella and those projects are near and dear to me. Um, but they don't, they, they, they're purely comedic. Whereas, um, some of the more recent things I've done are comedic, but also have this kind of this other aspect to it that I think has, is a, is become something that's, you know, uh, very meaningful to me. So hello, my name is Doris is sort of like the first one of those projects where like the kind of drama was, was a, was a major part of it. Um, so, but it's also a very comedic film. It also has a lot of absurdity and silliness to it. And, um, so, so I, I feel like it's a nice blend of, of all the different things that, sort of our influence, influence me. Uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you, what was it about this material that said, I, I have to do this? Um, I, I know this world. Uh, I myself was in therapy for many, many years in New York City, very close to where I'm sure Marty was in therapy. Um, so I could picture it. I could just see it the the offices the streets the buildings um the the hamptons where a lot of the stories set i love the hamptons i've spent many summers there i have many friends who who have places down there i love going there i feel like i've been at these parties that they had i mean not literally but like i actually have many friends who who were and so it's like this alternate universe that i was like very been very close to and so I could just picture it as I was listening to the podcast. I just felt like I knew these people and I knew this world and um, that, and, and then also just fat being fascinated by the kind of dark twisted way in which the Ike character, Paul Rudd's character manipulates and takes advantage of Marty, the Will Ferrell's characters takes advantage of his vulnerability. And I found that very compelling as well. I'll admit before I watched, I was wondering, cause I hadn't heard the podcast, how did this actually happen? And as I watched your series, I was like, oh, this is how it happened. It yeah. starts so well and so well-meaning. And all of a sudden it's just little by little, the walls come down. Yeah. And I feel like that's often what happens with situations like this where uh you know when, when we were making the shrink next door was when those documentaries were coming out about keith ranieri and nexium i don't know if you were if you saw any of those documentaries i've heard a little bit about it but i'm not as familiar i, I mean it's just a very similar kind of thing of you know you're kind of a a, a someone who's kind of like in a weird place in their life maybe they had a breakup or they they're, you know, they're, they're in between jobs and they're like not feeling happy in some way. And then they start going to this self-help program and, oh my God, this is so great. Everybody's so great. And, and you kind of, kind of get sucked in. It's sort of like a cult, actually. It's, you sort of get sucked in. And that's what happens to Marty is he gets sucked in by Ike and by Ike's confidence and by Ike's enthusiasm and by Ike's charming qualities. And but slowly it the relationship gets kind of toxic without marty really understanding it it almost happens it's like by the time he realizes how deep in he is it's too late he's already destroyed you know all of his lifelines have been used up at that point was there anything when you were researching this and getting ready to to um to film that you were really just shocked to learn Something that just really stopped you in your tracks? Um, yes, actually. Um, 
I don't know how well you know the, I mean, I'm assuming you know the story. I don't know if you've seen the whole series or whatever, but um, so there's a central, the central relationships are Ike and Marty, Paul Rudd and, and Will Ferrell, but then also Will Ferrell and Catherine Hahn. And Catherine Hahn plays Marty's sister, Phyllis. And one of the things that happens in the show is that uh, Ike, Paul Rudd, drives a wedge into the relationship between Marty and Phyllis, and basically they become estranged. What I didn't know is, is that they lived within a block of each other in New York. So they lived literally around the corner from each other and uh, did not see each other for 27 years. And they were one, they lived one block away from each other in on the Upper East Side. And, uh, or maybe it was the Upper West Side. But if you've ever lived in New York, to not see somebody that lives one block away from you for 27 years is like a mathematical impossibility, but also just so sad. Um, and Marty says he saw her one time and he crossed the street. So Phyllis says she never saw him once in 27 years, even though they lived one block from each other. That I did not know this, and that is um, I I've been I've spent a lot of time in New York. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, it's crazy, especially yeah, like, like the, just the local supermarket, like the local oh, place to buy the food. Subway, the subway. You just run into people on the subway if you're if you're in if you're in a neighborhood, like you just all take the same subway. Like, you know, maybe you don't see each other for a couple of years, but 27 years. That's one of the things. It's really amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm, you you always do a very good job at balancing like humor with heartbreak. And I'm just yeah, curious, yeah. what is it like in the editing room trying to find that balance? Or is it on set that you're figuring that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, how much is it on set? How much is it in the editing room? And is it a combination of, I guess, both? Well, you're 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 knowing in the in as you're shooting, you're knowing, oh, this is that these are those moments that are gonna be are gonna have that feeling to them. And so you're making sure to do something with the camera um, to let the editors know this is a moment. Don't, you know, whether it's pushing in or changing the frame a little bit. Um, but it's also in the script. You know that it's there in the script. And so hopefully, you know, if everyone's doing their job, it all kind of comes out very organically in the process. This is sort of there in the script and then it's there in the shooting of it. It's there in the performances. And then the editor knows whether we might have talked about it or he just he or she knows instinctively like th this is a moment to to you know and and if it's not that way then you, you usually it means that like if i'm not on the same page with the editor usually it means it's not a good fit so you usually when i work with an editor they know that that's the tone i'm looking for on that note i gotta stop i'm just gonna say um seriously great job on this uh i wish you nothing but the best hope it's a huge hit thanks a lot Good cool. talking to you.